Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and let's make a chevron quilt. But let's make it with no Y seams, no set in seams, no half square triangles, and a matter of fact, there's going to be no squares at all. We're going to make this stripped piece and it is going to go fast. And it is made in columns, no blocks at all. Now I've chosen 23 fat quarters and these fat quarters are from Timeless Treasures. And what I have done is I have laid them out in the order that I want them to appear in the chevron quilt. And now that I have them this way, I'm able to keep them in the order that I want. The other thing is finding a thread that is going to match all of these colors. And what I do is I'll take the thread out and I'll lay it on top of all of the fabric colors. And by doing that, I can see what thread is going to blend the most. Light grays work very good, but also taupe is another color that you can use. As you get darker, the threads are going to be more noticeable. So your lighter colors will work in this type of an arrangement. Most fat quarters run about 18 inches to 21 to 22 inches. And what we're going to do is we are going to cut going down the length of the fabric. So where the selvage is, we're going to follow the selvage to cut down. Square off the fat quarter and cut two and a half inch strips right to the end. We should have eight two and a half inch strips. We will need to work with five of them so we're able to put the last three aside because those are going to be used as borders. Take all five and stack them together. Square off one end and then cut a seven inch piece and a nine inch piece. And you should have a little left over. You need to do this to all of your fat quarters but one. And out of that other fat quarter you need to cut three seven inch squares and we're going to cut them in half on the diagonal. We now have six triangles. However, we're going to only need five, so we can take one and put it aside. And when we have all of the strips cut, we can put them in order as how we want them to go. And if you're not liking the way they look, this is the time to rearrange them. But you must keep them all in the same line. So you have the seven inch and the nine inch all in the same order. And now we get to sew them together. And we're going to start with a triangle. Starting with a small piece, we're going to match up the edge where the point is right along to the flat edge. So the edge is going to match up and sew down a quarter inch. The next we'll be taking a large piece. You're going to line up this edge with the top and it's matched along here and it's matched here. Now sew down that side a quarter inch. Press it towards the last piece that you put on. You just need to finger press it. So you now have made the triangle bigger. Take the next short piece and you're going to put it again on the short side. The short side's always going to go on one side, the long side's always going to go on another. And you're going to match up to the very top seam. And this is not going to match. There's going to be a gap here. Well, that's correct. Match up the seam along the top and the seam along the side. And stitch down the quarter inch. And you can go right off of that point. When this is done, press the seam towards the piece that you just put on. Then we need to take a long piece and put it back on to the long side. It's matched up here, it's matching down there, and you're going to sew down a quarter inch. Press the seam towards the last piece. So the seams are going to be always coming up. And you're going to be able to continue to sew this entire piece by using each piece. You're going to take the short and put it on the short side, matching up to the top. Put the long on the long side, matching up to the top. And you will use one of the short and one of the long all the way up until you're finished. And each time as you go, you are going to have this piece missing, but that is going to be cut off. And you need to make three 
of these columns with the colors all going in the same direction. And we now should have three of these strips that go all the way to the last piece of fabric. And put these three strips aside because we're going to work on the next two. The next two strips are going to be done the same way, however they're just going to be in an opposite way. So you're going to start with the triangle and instead of adding your first color, you're going to add your last color. Keeping them in order, you're going to do the last color going all the way to the first color. So you will have the same size strip, the colors are just going to go in opposite directions. Have all the short ends go on one side and have all of the long ends on the other side and do the entire row and you will have two of them. We now have three strips that are going with the fabrics in this direction and we have two strips which are opposite the fabrics going this direction. Now we need to trim these down. What you're going to do is trim off all of these points so you're going to have one straight row from the center points over four and a half inches. You need to have each one of those points at the four and a half inch mark. And you're just going to be able to trim a little bit, move the ruler up and trim a little bit, always keeping those center points at four and a half inches. Then you'll be able to turn it around and do four and a half inches going towards the other side. And you're going to cut that entire strip and your strip now looks like this. Now you get to sew the rows together. Leave the ends the way they are. So once I have them trimmed down, I'm going to be able to take them and switch every other row. So you're going to take the other side and bring it up to the front. And that is going to give you all of your colors that are matching. Now you fold the two of them together, match up the seam, and sew a quarter inch down. The seam along here is going to be a bias seam, so it is going to want to stretch. I would recommend that you pin each intersection before you bring it to the machine, and then let the machine work on its own. Do not pull or push the fabric. Now, the seam from the back is going to go in one direction, and the seam in the front is going to go in another direction. So what you can do is put a little mark a quarter inch over, and put the quarter inch mark on the top side underneath. And then you're going to be able to take your pin and put it right through where the threads and that mark match. Then take that pin and put it right in that intersection where you mark. Put the pin straight down, and then take the pin and move it coming out. Then as you're stitching along, when you get one stitch before that pin, you're going to be able to take out that pin and that is going to stay together perfect. And by pinning them, you're going to have some nice straight lines. So we need to get all of the rows together. And when all five rows have been sewn together, you're going to have on one end, two points come out and on the other end, you're going to have three points come out. Now if you wanted to do all of your rows the same, you could. The only difference is going to be is your chevrons are going to be a lot smaller. I'll put these two together, they are the same. And you can see that the chevron would be a lot smaller. Now that you have all of the rows done, take the seams and press them flat. And by doing that, you won't have one seam thicker than the other, and it's going to keep that smooth appearance. And when the pressing's all done, we need to square it up. And by doing that, we need to cut off these ends on both sides. The edges are going to be on a bias, so it will be very stretchy when it is going to be quilted. So I'd recommend taking leftover two and a half inch strips that you cut from the fat quarters sew them together and put a scrappy border all the way around and that's going to stabilize it from stretching. And with that piece border, we're done. Now this quilt works out to be 48 inches by 67 inches. If you want it bigger, well, you're just going to have to add more columns and you just make the columns longer by adding your short and your long pieces. And you can get this as big as you want it. You can start with just two fabrics and you can go as many fabrics as you want. It is a very versatile quilt. No half square triangles, no set in seams, five big columns, strip pieced, and we're done. 
Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe, and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.